Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are still in chapter six. The uh, chapter six is the normal distribution. We are now starting a new section, section six dash three, and this is video recording number one. Okay, so this is uh, section six three. It's called the central limit theorem, and um, it is, in a sense, it is just a, a continuation of section 6-2 because 6-2 is applications of the normal distribution. Well, here's another example. This is a application of the normal uh, distribution in section 6-3. Uh, okay, Th this is going to take some real uh, heavy-duty reading on your part. You're going to have to really read this carefully, okay, because the language seems confusing and you you're going to swear there's misprints but there really is not except for perhaps one or two that I will actually point out to you okay oh and by the way I am uh, using the publisher's ebook so this is this is edition 10 this is the normal edition I was able to resolve the technical difficulties that I had previously okay so I, I think it's very helpful to have a, a the big picture first okay in chapter or section 6-2 we were talking about applications of the normal distribution and a typical application would be something like you've got a bunch of men or women let's just say adults you got a bunch of adults you measure how much blood they have and the uh, the liters of blood is the random variable and you will ask questions like, uh, considering this sample of, or, or this population, let's say, considering this population of, of uh, measurements, uh, the measurements being the liters of blood, you ask questions like, what's the probability of having more than 5.3 liters? What's the probability of having uh, between four and five liters of blood things of that sort you're asking about measurements of ex of uh, particular data points okay so i hope that makes sense so you're you're looking at data points you're looking at measurements of how much blood someone has you're looking at measurements how tall somebody is what their iq might be you're looking at individual data points in other words individual measurements of the random variable so so that was section six two now, six, section 6.3 alludes to that. Uh, do you know what that word means? Alludes, A-L-L-U-D-E-S, alludes. When you allude to something, you make reference to something, or you, you uh, kind of uh, refer to it, so to speak. So right here, the author says, in addition to knowing how individual data values vary about the mean for a population, okay? So what is he saying? He's talking about what we did in section 6.2, individual data values. This author uses the term data values. I would say that in my, in my experience, having worked in industry, uh, engineers and physicists, scientists, people like that, in industry, we typically would call it data points. I think it's... And give me just a second of your time here. I want to explain why this is a, an important distinction. When, when you say data values, I believe it's confusing because people could misunderstand and think that when you're talking about data values, you're just talking about what are the possible data values? What's the range of values that it could be? But that's not the way the author means this. When the author talks about the data values, he's talking about the data points. He's talking about you've got a hundred guys out there that you measured and you measured their height and here's the data points. These are all of the measurements. Uh, the, the first one, the second one, the third one, and so forth. So to me, data values can lead to confusion. Data points is the standard terminology that's used in industry so that's why I'm kind of in the habit of calling it data points I hope that doesn't confuse you okay so what he's saying here is in addition to knowing how the individual data values or the data points vary about the mean for a population statisticians are interested in knowing how the means of samples means of samples 
of the same size taken from the same population vary about the population mean. Now, when you first read that sentence, I bet you it was confusing. If it wasn't confusing to you, you know, that's great. It was certainly confusing to me. So what he's saying there is we, we care about how individual data points act, but we also care about how the X bars act. Do you remember what X bar means? X bar is the mean of a sample. So how do the X bars act that are taken from the, the population? So you've got a population and you take a, a bunch of samples. Let's say you take you have a, a big population like uh, the uh, student population of Riverside Community College District. And you say, OK, I'm going to take a whole bunch of samples of the same size. I'm going to take 100 students as my sample. I take 100 students and I measure something. It doesn't make a bit of difference what you measure, but let's just do something very mundane so that we can understand it. So you take those 100 people and you uh, you measure their age. How, how old are you? Okay, In days, let's say. Okay, so how old are you in days? All right, 100 people are, are chosen in a sample. You have a sample, you can very easily come up with a mean, an X bar for that th those 100 kids, okay? Now what you're doing, and, and, and by the way, the, the sample size, the sample size has to be the same as, as you're doing this. So you, you take all these samples, you take all the possible samples of size 100 from the population of the Riverside Community College District. Now you can imagine, that's a a huge number of samples you could you know because every one of them is the same size but you have to take every possible one okay each one of those samples can have or will have in fact it will have an X bar it will have a mean of that sample now let's just look at it logically is there any reason why you could not consider the X bar to be a random variable I say not. I say that there's no reason why you couldn't. And to make it a little more clear, avoid the double negatives, you can indeed consider the X bars as a random variable. So that's what he's saying here. The means of samples taken from the population, okay, the means of samples, the X bars, he's talking about the X bars is going to be our new, uh, our um, random variable that we're going to consider is the x bars so you got to get that straight if you're t it, it, back in uh, section 62 we were talking about individual data points well in, in section 63 we're not talking about individual data points we're talking about the sample means see what it says right here distribution of sample means so it's the distribution of the x bars okay so let's take his example <clears throat> Okay, so be, be cautious. Read, you know, every word counts. In a math book, every word counts. It's a distribution of sample means, a distribution of the X bars. So we have a situation here. A researcher uh, selects a sample of 30 adult males. He finds the uh, measure, uh, the, I'm sorry, he finds the mean of the measure of the triglyceride level for this sample subjects to be 187 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so you, do you see what he's doing? You, you've got this population out there, you know, all the millions and millions of, of, of men in the United States. He, he samples 30 of them. He, he measures their triglyceride level and he sa finds out that the mean for that sample is 187 degrees. Now, I don't, out of those 30 guys that he measured, I have no idea what, uh, the third guy, the, Mr. Jones, I have no idea what his uh, triglycerides level is. I have no idea what Mr. Smith's triglyceride level is. I have no idea what Mr. You know, Garcia's uh, triglycerides level is. All I know is that the mean of those 30 guys, those samples, the mean is 187. Well, then he takes a second sample is selected. And the mean of that sample is found to be 192. And again, you don't know what individual data points are. All you know is what the X bar is, the sample mean is. Continue the process for 100 samples, okay? 
what happens then is that the mean becomes a random variable why not why wouldn't it be a random variable and the sample means the, uh, these hundred guys or uh, these hundred samples excuse me the hundred samples that you took so the first one you had a sample mean of 187 the next one you had 192 the next one you had 184 continue 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 do that a hundred times and you get what's called a sampling distribution of sample means now doesn't that sound confusing let's just look at it though here's the definition there in the green box a sampling distribution of sample means so the sample means are the x-bars okay a sampling distribution of the x-bars is a distribution using the means of the samples computed from all possible random samples of a specific size you can't change the size up above here we did there was 30 adult males you have to keep it at 30 adult males but you take all possible random samples of 30 men okay uh, and that's taken from a population so you don't need to know what the population size is all you need to know is the, uh, the sample size okay the language gets in the way here see a sampling distribution of sample means I don't see what the word sampling adds here it's a it's a distribution of the X bars that's all it is it's a distribution of the X bars you take a whole boatload of samples all possible samples all possible samples and actually let me take that back that the all possible samples that that's going to be the next concept that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the uh, uh, central limit theorem so right at this moment in time looks like you I got an alert here from uh, I, I, I subscribe to a I subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel and I just got an alert I'm glad it wasn't something embarrassing not that I would ever have something embarrassing okay so uh, I, I, this this concept of the all possible random samples we're gonna see that in here in just a little bit okay but the, the but the point I'm trying to make here is that if you take a uh, if you take a sample of a certain size let's say 30 that sample of 30 guys you can compute an X bar the X bar becomes a has its own distribution it has a distribution of its own okay just consider the X bars as being the random variables and you cannot go wrong okay all right so we'll see how this is so important it's one of the most important theorems uh, in statistics okay now here's something else okay if the samples are randomly selected with replacement now that doesn't make any sense right I mean how can you have with replacement if you pick 30 guys and you measure their triglycerides you're not gonna put that guy back in the in the group right I mean you, you know you've already measured him but this is a mathematical fiction here the samples are selected are randomly selected with replacement the sample means the X bars in other words so the sample means the sample X bars for the most part will be somewhat different from the population mean it, it, that goes without saying right it's, it, you're never gonna have it exactly the same okay but it's gonna be a little bit different from the population mean which we call mu these differences are caused by sampling error and what, that's just what we a name we give it that's the difference between the sample measure and the corresponding population measure due to the fact that the sample is not a perfect representation of the population okay well, we always have that that's that's the problem with using statistics obviously you don't have the ability to measure the entire population okay all right so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and uh, we'll see you in just a, uh, on the next video